What is up guys, welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope y'all doing well out there. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Jeffrey Epstein case once again. And that is because people are recirculating a misleading document, an FBI document that was written by, written and filed by an FBI agent back uh, all the way in 2008. And uh, they are claiming that this is a new document that proves that, uh, that Jeffrey Epstein was a was an informant for the FBI. Um, I am here to unfortunately pour some cold water on that theory because uh, this document does not prove that. Okay, and I'm going to tell you guys most likely what the document is all about, given the uh, chain of events that happened back then. And um, so there are a lot of uh, outlets out there. Most they're mostly entertainment outlets, so you should be taking them seriously, anyways. But uh, news, they were one of the first people to publish this misleading headline, and then it would, they were carried by other people who covered this. Some guy named Joe Miller, and then OK News also covered it. So this is all a mistake okay so first of all this is the document that everybody's talking about this fbi file document and they're using this one little part of this one sentence here to claim um that he will he worked for the fbi and that's the reason that he got a sweetheart deal now it is weird the deal they got it is weird now unfortunately this document doesn't prove that he got a sweetheart deal it doesn't even prove that this is uh informant document and i'm going to tell you guys exactly what this document uh is about when it comes to the case uh that was going on uh back then so before i start anything you have to first uh determine whether you're after the truth or whether you're after confirmation bias because a lot of people in this space want to believe that Jeffrey Epstein worked for some intelligence agency uh, there are a lot of people with that bug and they want to believe he's part of Mossad they want to believe he's FBI they want to uh, believe a lot of things and wiki people like wiki ward people who are just out to build a reputation don't care about the facts they've spread some misinformation a lot of people have been fooled by this stuff the, here's the truth as somebody who's actually studied the legal papers and who knows the actual facts about both the Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell prosecutions, there's no evidence that he worked for any of those people. OK, any of those groups, I mean, there is uh, there is evidence that he was re uh, related to elites. Absolutely. Uh, Jean-Luc Brunel, Al Brandt, Les Wexner. These are all real connections. But people take those real connections and they try to build things up that are not there. They try to re relate him to Robert Maxwell. The fact that they knew each other doesn't mean they were both Mossad. These are all just, there's no links. Things like, if, if you're not really concerned about proof and real evidence, then you can believe a lot of things. But uh, you just have to decide what you like, okay? So you can watch this video and just dismiss what I'm saying if you really want to believe that story. Or you can take the factual evidence that I'm going to present here. Then, and you can believe what is most likely going on here, okay? Let me explain what I think is most likely going on here, okay? So even I can't say for sure what this document actually says because like you can see here, it's redacted. So we don't know the context, but I'll lay, I'll lay my uh, story out for you guys and you can decide who you wanna believe, okay? So um, this is a routine non-classified uh, forfeiture uh, report. So forfeiture is done by the FBI and as well as other federal agencies, as you guys can see here, when there's a criminal investigation going on. And in this case, Jeffrey Epstein took a plea deal, uh, to, uh, um, you know, pleading guilty to the, some of the crimes, obviously lesser crimes than we would have liked. But nevertheless, they were prosecuted. He was prosecuted um, uh, by the uh, Southern District of uh, Florida by Acosta's office. He, he did get a sweetheart deal, but nevertheless, he was prosecuted. And um, and the FBI did an investigation, as you guys know. He, we, they seized a lot of evidence from him forfeiture, if you will, right? So here is an interesting article that was written uh, by the FBI about their forfeiture laws. And I want to read you guys a section here that might be informative a little bit about, about what's going on here. What sort of items can be seized for forfeiture? Just about anything of value, including cash, financial accounts, securities, businesses, real estate, jewelry, uh, professional licenses, antiques, artwork, lottery winnings, vehicles of all kinds, high-end electronics, and weapons. So obviously the most relevant part here for us is the financial accounts and all the papers that go into that. And that, I believe, that is the information that they're referring to here. Okay, so this is what, this is the actual FBI report. And this sentence is what everybody's basing their uh, their uh, hypotheses on. I wouldn't even call them hypotheses. They're wild guesses, okay? It says, Epstein has also provided information to the FBI as agreed upon. So there's, they're thinking that this information is something about the elites. And, you know, he was an, he was an informant. What I'm thinking is that this is this document was filed after the prosecution took place. So this is the FBI closing out their case and dotting their eyes on the investigation. And the and the given the fact that this document is a routine forfeiture report, 
The most likely scenario is that this FBI agent is reporting that the uh, information they requested from uh, Jeffrey Epstein regarding his financial accounts or his securities or his businesses, he had many of them. So the mo most likely scenario is that this report only proves that the FBI did a regular investigation of Jeffrey Epstein and requested some information from him. And this is confirmation that he turned over the relevant information to the FBI. Now, we don't know what the information here is. So I'll give you that one. There's some vagary there, so I can't say for sure. And this part is redacted. So even I can't say 100% that this is just uh, a normal document, although that is what this looks like, okay? Again, routine. This is a routine letter having to do with general forfeiture matters. That's what it says right here, as you guys can see, okay? Related to his case. And um, this, these redactions are normal. They usually redact uh, out the names of the agents and everything. Uh, and, and redactions don't necessarily mean that there's something scandalous. Courts and, and federal agencies redact everything. You should, I read CIA papers all the time. They're almost all of them are redacted until they're you know released 50 years later. Then we find out about what's in there. And most of it is mundane. And some of it might be scandalous, I guess. There have been some scandals, but um, they redact everything. So just because something is redacted doesn't mean they're trying to hide something juicy. <laughs> Most of the time, even some of the redactions are boring, okay? Federal agencies love their redactions. Let me read you guys the next part too. Many, though not all, federal crimes have forfeiture provisions. But just about every law the FBI is charged with enforcing has some kind of forfeiture aspect. For organized crime activities, financial frauds, drug trafficking, uh, cyber uh, corruption, trafficking, you guys get the point, terrorism, there is a forfeiture aspect for almost every crime the FBI goes after. They seize documents from all these places, and you guys have seen those uh, videos of uh, the FBI going into Jeffrey Epstein's houses and carrying out boxes and boxes of uh, stuff. A lot of that was financial stuff, as well as some suspect, you know, very suspicious paintings and, and uh, other things. Um, but most likely, given the uh, given how this document looks, the logical conclusion you can come to is not that this is some information he was giving out about elites. And that's why the FBI, you know, had to deal with Acosta to let him go. We still don't know why Acosta did what he did. That uh, deal was very suspicious because nobody else would have gotten that. So I, I grant you guys that that was suspicious, but we don't, this doesn't prove anything. My whole point is don't like, don't jump to conclusions. Okay. This sentence doesn't prove that this, there's some sweetheart deal between the FBI and, um, Acosta's office and Jeffrey Epstein. This proves that this is a mundane routine, uh, document that was filed by an FBI agent at the end of the investigation, uh, confirming the fact that Jeffrey Epstein turned over the information that was relevant to the case. Okay. Most likely financial information, if I had to guess. Okay. That's the most logical conclusion that I came to from knowing how FBI uh, and CIA papers are filed and the fact that this is not top secret, this is not classified in any way, and that this was at the tail end of the investigation, 2008, as you guys can see here, 9 18, 2008. Okay, these do not look like some kind of uh, confirmation of uh, of Jeffrey Epstein working with the uh, feds and having a deal to do some uh, mysterious uh, spying for them. That's not what this proves. Okay, like even if you don't accept my hypothesis, this document doesn't prove what people are saying. This article is saying the news article, as well as other people are saying that he worked as an FBI informant. This document does not prove that. OK, that's that's just it. I mean, you can say you can say that I'm wrong, but you, you can't say that the, uh, the people who wrote this article are right because they're not. This document does not prove that he was an FBI informant. Most of it is redacted. And this sentence could be many things. This information could be anything. But in the context of this investigation, I think it's about his own finances or some other information about the case. Not nothing, nothing to do with other people or other elites that you know people are p positing and hypothesizing about so that's where i'm coming from that's what this document looked like to me um everybody has to choose what they want to believe but i i presented you guys an argument here you can agree with it or not am i i'm okay either way but that's what it looks like to me all right so that's all i got to say for this video thank you so much for watching as always make sure to like the video subscribe hit the bell press all for future videos and if you want to support my work you can do so on patreon there'll be a link in the end of the video during the credits and also down below in the description box with that being said i'll see you guys all in my next video as always peace